Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Pipeline uh, AUK SIG meeting. This is our weekly meeting. It is February 7th, 2020. Welcome. Good afternoon. Good morning, wherever you are. Evening. Um, I am Mark, Marky Jackson. I, uh, I don't know what I do. I'm just saying, <laughs> I, do, I do a lot of things. That's, I do I a do. lot of different things. So, uh, do I have a note taker? Uh, I can at least uh, run the the, sh the screen sharing. I'm Liam cool. Newman. Hello, everyone. Uh, also on the call are Steve Tarana and uh, Mark Waite. And here's me okay, sharing. I apologize. I'm not going to volunteer to take notes because I reserve the right to drop off. I've got a single topic that I'm trying to explore, and so I'll leave it to somebody else to take notes. Okay, so awesome. I believe it is my turn for note taking. So oh, I will. Okay. I'll take the notes. Okay. Nice. Cool. Uh, I know uh, one of the things that we talked about last week was the personas. I did uh, get those personas linked, and they are in the document. I do think, however, we may jump uh, the the chain a bit here. Yeah, let's, uh, let's I want to ask Mark, I want to ask you a question. Would you be or are you going to be attending these meetings regularly? Probably not. Um, when I've got a specific topic, yes. But okay, awesome. I, I don't think that I don't, I, I suspect most of the topics here will not be things that would bring me in immediately. Beautiful. So we are going to move the uh, new item, which is meeting times to the end, since we don't need you for that. Uh, but I am willing to say that you, we, we can bring your topic up to the head of the list. That way we don't keep you. You're welcome to stay, but uh, there you go. So okay. your topic was how best to document pipelines. Where to put right. the documentation. How best to describe? Yeah, so I think Stephen really said that said this and said it well. Is that uh, this is really falls into the personas? Okay, so so maybe for my benefit, do we want to do a review of the personas that you're envisioning? That would help me, and it may help others who view this later. Most definitely. Okay, so I we've got while you're while someone's bringing up that personas doc, um, we've certainly got a number of places where we are describing the how to use pipeline. We've got the Jenkins IO documentation. We've got Jenkins minute videos that Liam had created. We've got several other places. Um, we've got documentation built right into the, the executable that presents, computes the, the, the help and shows it live in a what appears to be multi megabyte page. So okay. We've, we've got a bunch of docs. I'm not sure that we're reaching the right people. And so personas seems like, so Liam, maybe you want to open up the personas document that's linked there. Sure. While you're doing that, I'm going to talk about something related or, or at least in the same vein about what you're talking about, Mark, uh, that I found interesting and frustrating. And that was the developer documentation guide is very fragmented. Much oh, like you described yeah. right now, it is all over the place. And because I have a little bit intimate knowledge about how we are structuring our docs, I know where to look. But what, what dawned on me and the reason I asked in, uh, in, your, in your docs channel was, what if somebody didn't have that knowledge? I so, almost feel like we need to have a landing page that <laughs> you know, really points people to one set of like, I almost like to think of a mind map, if you will, for our documentation to make it easier for newcomers. And the reason I thought about that is because in the same uh, of Google Summer of Code, as students come on and they're trying to figure out how to do things, they're like, I don't know. And I'm like, go here. But when you go there, you're gonna also need to go here and then like multiply that by like 50 and that's the links I'm giving them. So when you talk about developer documentation, you, what do you mean by that? Are you talking about like the, I, I'm, 
unroll, unwinding the stack here. So Marky, my question is uh, like uh, developer documentation is what? Uh, so in I this would, case, I, what I would do, uh, not the extend, the not percent. the extend to Jenkins stuff, right? Not the no. how to write a plugin. Well, I think what you first do, and this is where we have to have our inception of personas, is I am a developer that knows nothing about Jenkins. Where do I go? I want to do something code related with Jenkins. Where do I go? Okay, well, you have now fork in the road. You can go on the core maintaining or you can write a plugin. Here's where we now diverge the path of documentation. But we have that in all kinds of different places. And for the person coming on for the first time that doesn't know that, it could be a, a large sort of undertaking just to even understand where they should go. I think that makes sense. I think before we even get to like a major restructuring, what we should look at what's the level of effort to add a, a search functionality, right? Like there, there's some beautiful. tools out there. There's some tools out there that can index the static site to expose like a, an index that can be used for a search box. I think that alone would go a huge way to be able to find a specific topic, right? Oh, right I'm looking at the Jenkins documentation now and there's no way from a page that I'm on to, to actually search the docs for like a keyword that I'm looking for. So you wouldn't just use Google search or Bing or you choose your favorite search engine to, to do that? The concern with oh. doing that is I have found, uh, and I like to use examples of how I came arrived at something. There was a gentleman in the Kubernetes Slack channel in the Jenkins channel that was asking questions about Okta. And my first thing when he pinged me offline at DM was, did you Google this? And he's like, yeah, and I found a bunch of CloudBees documentation that only tells me a fourth of the story. So that's the thing, right? So when people do Google things, they get a mixture of Jenkins, they get a mixture of CloudBees, and, and I think we need to do good. We've got to maybe be better at separating that. I think also it would require, it sort of assumes a level of Google foo that everyone might not have, right? If you're trying to search specifically the Jenkins docs, you should add like the site prefix to your Google search so it restricts the results to Jenkins.io slash docs. Uh, and then you're still relying heavily on Google to index everything appropriately. Um, it's definitely a possible solution, but I think there are some frameworks out there that for a pretty low level of effort can add a search box and index a site during like the generation of the, the static site to, to make your search more tuned for your content. Yeah. I mean like, so if I'm looking for timeout, I mean, I think this gets, gets me to the right spot, gets me to the right page, but it doesn't necessarily get me, well, kind of actually, no, this doesn't, <laughs> this got me to, basic steps as opposed to if I'm looking like, how do I, how do I add a timeout to my, um, like this Google search definitely did not, is not getting me where I need to go. It actually did uh, go uh, back to the first page that you hit. Okay. So uh, here's basic, but because it's a single page, you have to find timeout in the right hand block and click it. Right. Yeah. So, so it's, and there actually so, is even an anchor. So this is a good example. Like this is where one of those, one of those tools would probably actually take you to this anchor. Like that'd be much more useful, right? Okay. And while we're looking at an example like that, like it would be interesting to see an actual code snippet of using that. Like I, but this is I have experience. Right? This 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 uh, thing right here okay. is auto generated. So, um, pretty obviously. Um, so the, I mean, there's there's text that someone wrote. That's that's fine but I'm pretty sure this probably comes from the Java doc or something else. Um, well, so, so Liam, if you take a different, let's take a different page and let's look at one that's still, still auto generated. Okay. Uh, look for step slash workflow dash SCM steps. And let's look at the Git step. Okay. Uh, oops, I gave you bad data. See. Look for steps. I'll find it here. So steps. Yeah, there it is. it's this page. Steps reference. Search for the word Git space plugin. Okay. And click Git there. Okay, so this is a page that's still generated, 
mm -hmm. but is is populated with examples because the examples were placed inside the source that's read by the generator. Okay, so this that means that we need that the for Pipeline this kind of thing or plug-in authors have to insert the 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 examples into their into their into their documentation into their so that means source that, code. that that's what needs to happen is this needs right. to exist. Wow, that link is interesting. Okay. Time out. So the link is there. All right. Yeah, so so it's very much doable and that's doable incrementally by doing pull requests to to these target repositories for their their documentation. So that's very much we can do that on this generated page. I don't think that would solve the navigation problem you highlighted earlier where hey, I didn't find with a search something with, that took me straight to timeout, right? You were looking for specific information about timeout. Timeout. And what, what it, yeah, exactly. And what it gave you instead was a single page that has all the keywords in it or a whole bunch of keywords in it, and you have to get lucky to find it, right? You have to, oh, Matt, look for the table of contents. Oh, there it is. It's in there. So I would. it's also an interesting point for the, generation like if there's a way for the auto generator to to control this then having each of these be on their own almost on their own page would be better right yeah it might be and, and in or fact that, i mean it, it would get us better google, google results because then it then would. right and that's a that's yeah, a generator I think there's thing. two separate i think there's two separate uh modes to talk about right there's navigation once you're on the site how do i find my way around and then there's also the separate uh problem of like i need to find a very specific thing do i search from within jenkins ci so there's better developer experience or do i have to open a new tab and do a google search and, and find it right? right so we can talk about what's the best way to to modularize the documentation to make it easier to find things how do we organize those modules so that you naturally can find your way to them? And how do we uh, bubble them up through a search functionality, whether that's Google or an internal search functionality using like Lunar or something similar to that is its own conversation. Right, and, and good insight, which, which leads us almost back to, the, back to the notion of personas and how, does the, how do those personas interact with the documentation? That's perfect, thank you. Okay. So I think I think I've I've taken enough time from the the SIG meeting. I don't need to derail on the docs. I, I well, feel like we've the got the docs four are of part here. of the thing that we're talking about. So it's perfectly okay. reasonable. Yeah. Continue. Sorry, I just don't feel like you have to like run off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, Please so, stay a while. So, so it, it feels like we've got a, a, and maybe what we should do is let me ca or capture in the notes that we've got a, a navigation challenge, right? There's a there's a navigation, so a finding it, yeah, uh, and then there's a, then there's a uh, a structural thing about how do we organize it such that it, well maybe that is navigation, right? There's the well, who's searching? Uh, what are they searching for, and why? Yeah, and also how do we how do we generate it, and like where what is what is the source of the documentation? Right. Okay. Do we know what the current uh, framework is that's being used to to create the content from? I'm assuming something like Markdown or ASCII doc. It's ASCII doc. Well, well, actually, well, I think it's those pages those pages that we were looking at. So the the page that we looked at with the Git plugin. Mm -hmm. That one, that actually is written in the plugin source code as the HTML help for that step. And then a generator extracts from each of the plugins their, their snippets of HTML help and their parameter descriptions. So in this case, I authored this thing by writing HTML in, in a specific file in the Git plugin repository. You had to write the HTML for it, not just ASCII doc or Markdown. Right. It's it's really it, it's Jelly, if I remember right. And now oh. I'll have to go look to see, but I think it's Jelly. No, okay. no, I take it back. It's definitely not Jelly. It is it it is help. 
because Jelly is used for the UI forms, but not for the, the online help. The online help comes from uh, just HTML files, but inside the plugin source code. So git step, for example. So I have, a git, I have the git plugin here. Yeah, so if you go into source, um, main resources, And now I think it's probably under Jenkins plugins git, git step. In that directory, you'll find help.html. Click it and let's see. Yeah, there it is. So we don't, wow, okay. So does this um, get pulled directly in to the website? Yeah, so the web, the website is is static is a static site, right? And so there is a separate background process that extracts con documentation from plugin contributors and places it into those pages for use in the in the static site. So I'm I'm just thinking from a security perspective, <laughs> if I were to put an arbitrary we both went block, the same spot, like oh dear, this is I not good. <laughs> Can yeah, I add it, a script block that does whatever JavaScript I want to on the docs page? Sure, sure. If you are a plugin maintainer and if you have, I mean, you, you have just described a supply chain exploit, right? And there are a lot more interesting ways to do supply chain exploits than, than the HTML page. <laughs> if, if I'm going to be a, do a supply chain exploit, let's exploit the source code of the Git plugin <laughs> or something like that that's much, much more frequently executed than people visiting a web page. Mm, yes, fair, fair. yes. It's a it's a supply I, chain exploit exploit. I am I'm thinking about like someone registers a new plugin that looks like it has functionality, uh, but really what their goal was was to add some some nefarious HTML. Um, well, yeah, I mean I don't it's, it's probably a different it's, rabbit hole. It's but <laughs> it's the same it's the same exploit. Yes, absolutely. If yeah. if we if we take a nefarious plugin into the ecosystem uh, they could do harm. All right. So, so we, but anyways, I, uh, so the question, the, the question that I have here actually is, can we make this easier? Cause like writing HTML to get documentation is not, not preferable. Um, uh, you're awesome, but I suspect most, um, most maintainers wouldn't either not have the time or not, not have the, inclination to, well, write documentation, but also write it in HTML. Yeah. And so, I, go ahead. We, hmm. so, so I'm currently dealing with the documentation issue on, you know, in my day job, and mm -hmm. there's a framework out there that's targeted at distributed documentation called mm -hmm. Antora. So the idea is you give it a playbook file that just says all the different repositories you want to pull documentation from it's all written in ASCII doc and it gets pulled together, right? So there are hundreds, if not thousands of Jenkins plugins. So a migration is a very large level of effort, but right. picturing a perfect world where like every plugin has a docs directory that has modules for documentation and then a giant Antora playbook that pulls it all together and generates a static site, lowers the technical barrier to entry for people needing to know how to write HTML and starts to let you uh, do it in ASCII doc in a slightly more user friendly way. Yeah, so we um, have something like, we have something very much Antora like that generates the Jenkins.io site. It's not specifically Antora because Antora didn't exist at the time we created the, yeah. the Jenkins.io site. But yes, the concept that you're using is describing is a good one. This, this is specifically reusing online help that we provide to users to okay. also present it as our documentation. And so it's that this is a rather obscure case, the general purpose case of describing tutorials or describing how to guides, those are written in ASCII doc. And then Antora is, uh, and others are very happy to take ASCII doc and present them. Hmm. So for instance, this, um, this help is actually is uh, you can get to it from inside Jenkins too, right? Correct. Basically, that there's a right. the, one of the question mark spots. The hover over. Well, uh, yeah, one of the little notes, the, the stuff that appears at the side, basically the, the little question marks. Well, so right? just to be to be absolutely precise, 
this, because it is a pipeline step, Mm -hmm. is actually not available on any question oh. mark because there really isn't a pipeline step for a question mark. Right. What happens though, when you're inside Jenkins, if I go to pipeline syntax to the snippet generator, the, the pipeline syntax page. Uh, okay. Anyways, continue. Yes. Yeah. If I go there, then there is a link which will take me to, which will generate that documentation and show it to me. Um, and and it generates documentation for all of all of the pipeline keywords and then puts them into a collapsed list and then i can navigate to my specific keyword expand it and see all that documentation the and that that's that's great except that that means in my jenkins instance i'm generating a multi megabyte file yeah, so if you'll open one of those, open a pipeline job. Oh, no, actually, you can even do it here. Just put slash pipeline dash syntax on the end of your URL. It's also available from inside any jank, any job that uses pipeline, but this will get us there. Okay. Okay, online documentation, the second from the third from the bottom there. When you click that, you're going to wait a while. Mm, nope, oh, no. go straight to pipeline. Oh, yeah. Okay, so so that's different than my local Jenkins instance. Uh, it might be a little older, um, but in any case, declarative uh, well, now, thing. Got, now you've got me inspired. I got to well. Anyways, there is a. Hang on, and I'll find it, and we can show it here. In, here we go. Uh, so if I go to the go to the snippet generator and select get the get step, for example, I get right. Help. There you go. There's the, yeah. And it, it comes off of this little. <laughs> exactly. But that's where that, that shows and, up. And all of that HTML that we read is in fact. Yeah. So let's see online. Oh, nope. You're right. Online goes straight to Jenkins.io examples reference. Okay. Global. Oh, steps okay. reference. There it is, Liam. Okay. Uh, go there. above. Yeah. Steps Got reference. It. When you click that, Waits a while wait. and then it basically generates that for my wait. Keep, keep waiting, keep waiting because it's it's still generate. You see that spinning up at the top. It's still spinning. I see. And that steps reference will take a good long time to generate. Okay, now it's done. And now if you click that git, then now it the... expands. There's another view of it. Okay. So, Je Je gentlemen, I apologize for interrupting. I have to drop for something. Uh, Liam, I made you the host. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Marky. Well, and and I think I've I think I've achieved the pieces that I was most worried about or most trying to to get insights on. We've got people who think about this, and you're. It sounds like you're open to the the idea that we might consider generating not just a single page on Jenkins.io for a step, but have a page per keyword as well, or something. I mean, like there's. Right. There's ways to the, to improve that navigation, yeah. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, but, yeah, and I'm, we're, I mean, I'm definitely open. And you have just as much power on Jenkins IO as anyone else, pretty much, right? So you can you could actually nav uh, advocate that forward. Right. Absolutely. I, I I was more looking for opinions than, ah, okay. than proposals for the, of who did who will do the work. Right. Okay. I'm, I'm I'm trying to understand. And for instance, I had missed the fundamental concept of personas that was mm. brought up earlier. Here, it's like, oh yes, that's right. There are different reasons why people come looking for things. Right. And that. Thanks for letting me take that time. I'd propose I'll call an end to my topic, okay? Uh, because there's more to be thought about, and this is a not a, this is a very reasonable place to do it uh, for discussion, specifically about pipeline, where there's a lot of interest in pipeline documentation right now. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Mark. So, let's see here. Uh, Marky was running this show and he actually uh, had to drop. So let's So I see. believe next up was a uh, persona documentation, right. right? So we've had conversations in previous meetings 
about trying to get a better sense of who our users are, uh, try to categorize them into reasonable personas. Um, Mark, you was nice enough to put that doc together, so maybe we can start going through that. Right. Um, and I was basically, I was looking at this. He, he divided these up by, uh, I think, coding experience, OSS experience. I'm not sure what he meant there. Um, and what the, the sum experience, maybe the general experience, like industry or CI. I'm not sure what the, what that third uh, dimension of uh, items that he was looking for there. Um, no code, and he had divided up to no code, some code, and lots of code, looks like, yep. And uh, OSS, not OSS, and then looks like three different uh, in language, out of language, and uh, yeah, I'm still trying to figure out exactly how he <clears throat> How he divided that up? Yeah, it looked like it was around uh, how much coding experience does the person have, how engaged have they been in an open source community in general, and then how long have they been in the industry. Um, there might be some tweaking we want to make to that to make this a little bit more Jenkins centric, right? So a Java developer with 20 years of experience could have no experience with Jenkins. So we probably want an axis in our personas that's targeted at how much Jenkins specific experience does somebody have. Right, okay. So when, could you clarify for me, Liam, what, you, what, what I should infer by industry experience? So is no, that language or is that uh, that I've done continuous integration before. I, I I still am not clear on what the so what I'm looking at is this last. He is divided. He has three characteristics on as this like top level descriptor of each persona. But I don't know what he meant by this last one because the values so far are some experience, lots of experience, and in language family and outside language family. Yeah, I, I was confused as well. I think we'll maybe need to talk to Marky about yeah. what exactly that one meant. You have, the more axes we have, the bigger of a combinatorics problem this becomes. Right. right? If we've got three, di three different ones, now we've got, what, nine different personas potentially. Yeah, um, and it looks like he has... I'm sure uh, that yeah, I think there's ways to collapse some of these a little bit, um, but it looks like he's got roughly three, three by four. So he's got like 12, some, no, yeah, basically A through D and one, two, and three. So yeah, 12, but I don't know how that, where the, that comes from exactly. Um, just some experience. Just gonna list out the combinations here um, and there I think he might have some overlap uh, some like two different things or something um, yeah I know that he had mentioned that this was uh, repurposed from a previous right. persona exercise and there might be some remnant from that right um, just thinking about the axes in general I think there's also an important axis of, of scale are you building a pipeline for a single team? Are you building a pipeline for, you know, a set of development teams and you're part of an internal tooling, uh, internal tooling team within your organization? Because the needs are typically a little bit different. Um, I do think that we want to, we probably want to set a cap at how many personas we have, right? We probably yeah. want to scope it to like four or five max. Yeah. Um, um, because in my experience, uh, people like to people like to name the personas so that like they just become a part of our conversation. Uh, like Sally is an experienced developer working at a large scale with right. the Jenkins implementation. Um, um, so this matrix is a little larger than than we want it to be for now, but um, I think it's it's a good place to start talking. Um, so let me just grab this. I'm just trying to get a, a high level view of what he was. 
uh, no SS versus OSS. Uh, none, some, lots. Um, okay, so, uh, so let me, let's just start here. Um, we have someone who just wants to be a part of the community, sees opportunities to contribute and looking to add uh, to test a new career. Okay. So this is sort of like the getting started persona. Mm -hmm. This is somebody that maybe uh, just started in software development. They find their first role as someone that needs to help automate software delivery processes. Uh, so what are, what are their needs, right? They're, they're probably, when we go back to that, that uh, idea of an on-ramp, they're probably starting at the beginning of that on-ramp. They need to understand what is Jenkins and what do you use it for. They probably need a lot of examples of different use cases. Um, they'll need to understand that, like, what is a Jenkins pipeline in the first place? I think there's a lot of implicit understanding that, like, Jenkins pipelines are a custom DSL on top of Groovy. That would probably be a good thing to explain, like a high level overview of what even is a Jenkins pipeline. Right. Um, uh, I ran, that's the end of my ramble at this point. Uh, so what I'm gonna sort of add here is what, what do they need? Like what, <laughs> so their motivations are this, but like, how can we, I'm trying to think about like, how can we engage them? But maybe that's this too early to think about that. Um, Cause we're still trying to sort of define these out. So uh, season up, yeah, I'm trying to see what he's looking at. May over volunteer. So, all right, may, so this is no code. I don't know what the lots of experience is. Um, I'm assuming it's it's. I, I do feel like so far there's sort of there seems to be an assumption in these personas that the person wants to be involved in the open source community. That's probably a, a much smaller percentage of of users that are looking to get involved in the community, right? A lot of people found that Jenkins is a good tool. They want to use it and they want to. They want to basically accomplish their ticket in their sprint and move on. Um, not everyone is going to want to join SIGs and, and Gitter channels. So let, let me, let's actually let's let's talk about this. So you have um, let's just pick up some ideas here. So you have an enthu uh, a new enthusiast. I'm trying to. I'm just trying to like maybe we should just talk about it a little bit and the people that we've met in the in in so, working on Jenkins rather than like trying to be like uh, really thorough. It's like, okay, so who, who have I talked to? Right. I think, I think we have Yuri, the utilitarian, which is who <laughs> Steven was just describing. Right. Yuri, the utilitarian really just wants to get the job done and does not want to waste any time and can't afford to spend any time helping a community, et cetera, et cetera, anything. They are just get the job done and and get back to their solving their real problem, which is creating great software in something. And I'd probably say that's at least 80% of the community, if I had to, to guess, if we look at the fact that Jenkins has millions of users worldwide, I, I, I don't think 90, there's millions. Of, 5 percent or more, if yeah. human behavior holds any, yeah. any usual thing, it's probably between the 95 to 99% range. Right. Most of us are utilitarian. Yeah. So I'm gonna, I used to do my job. I don't have time to time to uh, engage. Yeah. Right, and there's sort of an inverse relationship between their engagement in the community and their. Um, understanding of experience, right? Like a utilitarian type person wants to be able to find things quickly, uh, find examples, implement it, modify and move on. People that are involved in the community are 
have probably more context to why things are the way they are and are going to be more understanding of maybe sub-optimized documentation organization tying off of our last uh, topic there, not to pick on the, the docs at all. No. Um, um, yeah. So give me docs, tell me do, do what I want to do. And I'm out. <laughs> Mm -hmm. right. yeah. um, if I can figure it out, ah, that's the other one. If I can figure it out, figure out how to do what I want to do without, like, even going to the docs, I will. Like, they, they're not even they're not even going to go to the the mail, the the the, the dev list. They're not going to ask a question. They're just going to do some quick searches and run away. <laughs> And if they can't find it quickly, right. they're just going to hack it together. Right. And that probably That's... means that this person is, is also the least likely to read about best practices or be strict about implementing them. Right. They're going to find an example, hack it to do what they need it to do and yeah. move on to the next ticket. Right. A lot of times when I find someone asking, a channel, uh, a question in the channel for the first time, they're probably utilitarian that got stuck. Yeah. And you go in and see what the situation is and they took a tutorial and then added 50 lines of code. And now they're, they're looking to make that next step to maybe make this scale better. All right, and that transition is probably an interesting thing to talk about too. We want to figure out how to, that's pipeline of people go from utilitarian to contributor to maintainer or whatnot, right? Like how do we get more and more people engaged to help out with these things? Because it, it makes everything a little bit easier the more help we have. Okay. For those watching online, if you want to help maintain a couple plugins, let me know. <laughs> um, yeah, and this is, I mean, this is where we end up with this, the, the silent, uh, the silent majority on uh, that, that use Jenkins, right? Yep. So. I mean, I've, I've talked before about this and I just never, <laughs> I'm a member of the community and I still haven't actually done it, is like creating a plugin that, is, that looks for patterns and usage and just like pops like something in the log messages saying, hey, this is where you want to go to find out about that, right? Um, so that we have some, some engagement with, with people um, is Google the Analytics hooked up to the documentation at all? Like, do, is there a way to get metrics around who's looking at what? Yes, and it's okay. significant effort to get the analytics, but we have a feedback site where people give us a, hey, give us your feedback on this, which still continues to receive very interesting comments, some of them rather inflammatory, yeah. others, others really painfully brutal. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, the, the Git plugin page, the one that we looked at earlier today, was the most hated of any page on the entire site and had the most negative comments. Thus, I spent some effort trying to make it better. Right. We'll see if that actually helps with the inflammatory comments that we get. <laughs> that just means that it's one of the most popular. Right? I, it's a numbers game. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lovely positive way to look at it. I like that. That's a very good positive way to look at it. What, whatever the reason, it was the top as having negative comments. And so we picked it first to target. I remember when I was working on this more, the one that actually got the most, uh, most number of views was uh, the one on, I think it was on agents. And the, the problem was that it was blank and it was just like, <laughs> comments like, what is this? Which just tells us like, oh, this is, and then it needs to get filled, yeah. Anyways. Um, all right, so, so we're going we go back, back to, the, to personas, right? We, co we covered the person that's maybe getting started for the first time, the silent majority. 
I think the next step, I probably, I'm probably the newest Jenkins community member on the call right now. So I, I think the next step is joining the getter channels, right? Like you have a problem, Stack Overflow hasn't been helpful. The docs haven't been helpful. So you try to figure out like, who can I talk to about this? So you join a getter channel. So the people that have gotten to this point probably have some Jenkins experience, um, right? They, they have at least used Jenkins enough to know that they have a problem the docs can't solve. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of a, a it's, there's, they're still kind of on the utilitarian end, but they're um, social utilitarian. <laughs> yeah, maybe even like power users like there are people that the average or most common use cases aren't working for because if they, if they were working, they probably wouldn't need to have engaged on the Gator channel. Right. Um, I would call it Devin, the desperate utilitarian. <laughs> are they desperate? Oh, 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 it's not always desperate. Some of them they're they, it just means that they're, they, they're like, mm, they're, they're, they've moved from just like, I just used it to get it done to, can I use this to do something like, can I use this to do one more thing over there? Right. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. So an ex extended, an extended yeah. utilitarian. Yeah. yeah. So Eric, the extended utilitarian. Uh, I'm trying to keep some mixture of, of genders in here too. So. Oh, another, oh, so then it Erica. should be. Uh, Erica, thank you. Oh, very um, good. Yeah. Or Ellie or. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay, so um, this is usually the point where people are like, ooh, I can, I can get Jenkins to do something. Um, uh, joining, uh, asking questions. All right, and at this point they start to have some uh, desire to understand best practice, right? Yeah. They're probably at a point where they want this to be easier for them. So they want to start aligning their pipelines to different design patterns that will make it easier for them to build and maintain. I just, I just realized um, what this is. The person that this most often is, is uh, I was told that I need to go use Jenkins. I was, I was told, <laughs> I was handed the Jenkins instance after, after, after Yuri left. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. I've got to drop off. So thanks. I'm going to fade out. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for, Thank thanks you, for joining us and uh, hope to see you again uh, on here at least. <laughs> um, see, I, I run into this persona frequently. Yeah. Um, I, I inherited a Jenkins instance. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot going on. I'm not familiar with what do I do next? Right. Most of the time they didn't inherit a perfect yeah. Jenkins following best practices. They inherited somewhat of a rat's nest because the person before them did what they had to to get it done. And they start to want to optimize. Uh, learning. Uh, I understand quite a bit. I, well, so they have a, I have a working uh, working system, uh, system to, uh, base my work, my understanding on. Uh, but it doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. So in, in your experience, how, how frequently are the maintainers of Jenkins or the administrators different, uh, using a different role than like the authors of the pipeline? At least in my experience, if you're administering Jenkins, you're probably also the person writing the pipelines, but I don't at know level, if in the rest of the, the industry that's true. Well, at this level, yeah, I think you are. Um, basically, after this, like uh, when you go beyond this, you get to, I'm... Uh, I'm a member of a team that's been that's that's doing Jenkins, or that that I'm a member of the DevOps team that that manages a Jenkins for 
like my my group, right? It you get a, you yeah. get sort of single team. Um, you get a team or a person that does this for for one or more. Like it's just that that they move beyond just one team to a bit more, and they're doing. Uh, yeah, so somewhere in here you go from I write the pipelines to somebody else write the, writes the pipelines, right? Um, or it's weird because on one level you have uh, the people that that and I don't I don't want to get lost just yet. Um, so uh, help and uh, best practices to. Make it so I can do less. So I, this person, um, they're they're probably not going to contribute to Jenkins. They're still looking. They're they're not going to be part of the community in that respect. They might, you know, but they'll be on on. They might be on the channels. They're going to ask questions. They've they've at least engaged yeah. um, somewhat, right? Yeah, I think these people are the bug reporters, but not the bug fixers. Mm -hmm. Fair? Yeah, I think that's fair. Um, right, and then I think there's probably two more, right? We talked about the DevOps team. Okay. Uh, and then the then we go all the way up to plugin maintainers. So uh, DevOps team member. Let's just, let's, let's make sure that we got that uh, city of it. And then you have uh, community member of plugin one's developers. Part. Yeah. Yeah. I think we can group all those like super advanced users into a common bucket of maybe the power users or plugin developers. Um, project contributors. Let's go with that. That works. Uh, it's not that covers it's, it's a bit more than I, I, I'm. Uh, so everyone contributes as long as they're. Even just asking questions, that's that's helpful. But like, um, but no, I'm just trying to see whether or not that's that's a sufficient. Um, a contributor might not be. Um, well, I think contributor could be yeah. like you help out on a particular plugin, or you answer people's questions in the in the channel, like these. These are really the pillars of the community that, that help out other people. Okay. Whether that's through plugin development or answering questions, I think all those people probably have the same, more or less the same. For, from, from our perspective, people that are, you know, involved with the community are going to be like in, in a, so, uh, so people that are long-term project contributors is, it, are all sort of in the same bucket. At that point, you've got uh, the resources to find questions. You know who to talk to. You'll be, you know, saying, "Oh, I need to talk to this person," or "I'm I know that this is a problem, so I'll ask that." You know, or I'll go over there. Um, they're already well versed enough to. to they're tied in, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. They, um, they have a network. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
Okay. All right, so if we focus on the, the DevOps team member for a bit, try to flush that out. Um, this is definitely where I probably relate the most. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, I think there might be there might be one at least one more persona in here, but I think this is a good start um, because we're uh, and we're almost at time. But I think so. I don't know if you want to fill this that out a bit. Um, what what do you think here? Um, so I, I think I think person that's a DevOps team member starts to worry about different design patterns and reusability, right? They're supporting multiple teams simultaneously. They need to understand how to, how to do that, right? Um, it is so hard to take off my templating engine hat because that's literally why I wrote it. So it's like this, I'm trying to think back to what my problems were before trying <laughs> to solve them. And it was yeah, really, exactly. <laughs> right? So it was really about how do you, how do you build and maintain pipelines at scale for multiple teams? So there's, that's when like global shared libraries starts to come in because you want to modularize code, right? So um, at this point, like this team member is usually the person that has written a giant global shared library for their team that different teams end up consuming. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they, start to care more about best practices like Jenkins performance and utilization, right? Now that you're building a Jenkins uh, instance that's going to support multiple teams, you have a lot more concerns about system resource utilization and like a distributed build architecture. Um, I'm trying to think if this person fixes plugins. Like I don't, I don't they think might. they do. They um, might, they might contribute. Um, but I mean, like if it, well, if I think for ease of, yeah. For ease of separating it, I think it's safe to say this person might like fix issues on existing plugins. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to draw the line somewhere, right? But no, the long-term yes, project yes. contributors are like the initial. They'll create the plugin and maybe they'll guide direction and stuff. But mm -hmm. you'll you'll lean on these DevOps team members also file bugs and help start fixing them. Right. Um, they're probably more involved in the community, starting to answer people's questions. Um, because they have that experience at scale. Uh, this person cares a lot about training for pipeline consumption, right? If they're maintaining a centralized Jenkins instance, that means that other people are consuming the pipeline. Uh, so documentation and, and developer experience start to matter to them, hopefully. Okay. Um, all right. If I could get a list of all of these people, I would love to give a, <laughs> a talk with them. <laughs> right. Um, so, I mean, these are probably the people that 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 we see most often at Jenkins World or that kind of thing, right? Um, yeah, they that... probably, so just, I was just going to say just by the nature of the fact that they're on a DevOps team, they probably work at a larger company, um, where the role of a DevOps engineer has been centralized to a common team. Mm -hmm. Um, So I answered a question for my team or group. I need to be able to teach others to do to do pipelines, to write pipelines. Yes. Or write. To either write I need, or to consume. Well, I need I need to I need to teach others to use Jenkins. Like that's what they're like yeah, use I Jenkins to do whatever, fair. yeah. Right, and that could be as simple as like, I need to teach the developers how to look at build box or view their test results all the way up to, I need to teach the development teams how to create a pipeline. Yeah. 
Okay. I've seen a lot of different DevOps teams that like write that shared library and then all the development teams just pass different input parameters to it or something. Right. Yeah. So they end up having documentation around how that works. Right. So these people are creating abstractions on top of Jenkins pipeline to facilitate mm -hmm. scale. So we're out of time. Um, and I don't know how long this uh, marketing thing would, would go for, but um, let's, so now that we've started writing this out, let's think on this for this week. Um, uh, we didn't get to, yeah, I think this is a good start. Yeah. Uh, we didn't get to talking about uh, a, having a different uh, alternate meeting time, maybe every other week. Um, but we can do that in the Gitter channel. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, recorded later, uh, join us in the Gator channel and we're going to be figuring out uh, a time to do these meetings at least every other week or something that, uh, that supports more time zones. Uh, so, and so uh, let's see here, Stephen, for you and me, um, maybe we can kind of continue building out this list, um, sort of think about whether or not there's, uh, I think there's, I think there might be one more persona in here. There's, cause I think, I think what you've got here, the one thing I would say is I think that, that the DevOps team member, there's probably at least two personas in here. One of them is, is someone who's actually doing what you've done, which has moved into that. Like I'm going to write like shared library and tools and like that sort of bigger version. And there's a slightly lower version of that. That's, that's a little closer to the, look, I, 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 I write pipelines, I use pipelines, like they, they're maybe not thinking of that one next, they haven't gotten to that next level of abstraction, right? Yeah, um, and I, think I agree. I think, I think we have a good point to, I can try to flush this out and then next week we can pick this back up and hopefully Mark Reed will be able to join and we can talk through the content that was already here. Cool. All right. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Have a good day. Mm -hmm. Bye.